Well, I, I, of course, we're fascinated by your story, and, and I'm fascinated medically how those procedures were done, but God bless you. Um, do you consider the situation, I understand you consider the situation with Caitlin to be somewhat dangerous? Well, I think it has the potential to be dangerous for sure, and I, I think one of the things is that the tremendous amount of uh, media and exposure uh, to someone at this point in a transition uh, with all of the pressure and all the things going on, certainly this is the key time in a transgender's life and certainly is exciting. But I worry about the time when the lights go off and the shows go off and all of a sudden, uh, you know, nobody's around. You're and there with your private, as we say, you're there with your private thoughts. Now, Walt, you needed, you felt you needed to get the surgery. Why, why did you get it if, in, after all, you didn't really need it? Well, I, you know, I started as a child transgender at the age of four or five, and I began cross-dressing and did that uh, throughout my life. I did get married like Bruce and, and had two children, had a fairly normal family, but I was still struggling with gender identity issues. I had this tremendous desire to change genders that just continued to build and build over the years. And then why did it remit after you had the surgery? You remit? Uh, well, it, you know, it was when I had the surgery, I was excited. I was, people came up to me and said, you've never been happier. And I was doing well. I mean, I was successful and I lived successfully for eight years. As a woman. I enjoyed being, as a woman, I enjoyed it. Well, what but, went wrong? Well, after about eight years and I started studying psychology uh, because I wanted to become a counselor and help people, I started to realize that there's a lot of other things that, we, that hadn't been talked about regarding transgenders and I learned that many transgenders suffer from what we call comorbid disorders. They're secondary uh, disorders that are not diagnosed prior to surgery such as separation anxiety, dissociative disorders, bipolar disorders. Uh, but so, I, I would what, argue, Eric, I think you'd say the same thing which is that that's well known to be the case mm -hmm. But that doesn't typically rem change the gender issues. Well, no, I, I kind of agree with you. What's his name? I'm sorry. His name is Walt. Walt. Okay, I, I agree with you in that. I just, I think it's that's why I say it's so important to get, you know, therapy and to really know that it's something that you want to do because you could be, you know, transgender and want to change sexes, or it could be, it, there could be a mental but, but, illness. But even when and there he's are, saying but that listen, when researching well, no, it, he recognized that there were other things, and it yes, wasn't but the hold transgender on, thing. Hold on, my experience has been, and Walt straighten me out on this, and my experience has been that even when you treat the associated, the comorbid disorders, the gender different. issues remain. So I'm curious why they suddenly remitted or reversed in your case, even when you were living happily as a woman. That's confusing to me. Well, because a lot of times if the disorder is treated properly, the desire to change genders won't be but there. But not Dissociate. typically. Not typically, though, right? Well, well, you know, the thing about it is they, you know, there isn't real good data to say typically one way or the other. We do know, and I know from my website that gets 30,000 hits a month, that people write me all the time and, and acknowledge that they were suffering from a disorder that started in their childhood that was never addressed prior to surgery, well, and they themselves decided to transition back like I did. Okay.